Last time on Sea of Stars. Positive outlook. Huh. Oh, oh! Mirth! Town of Mirth. Under the sea, under the sea, under the sea. Uh, sorry, sorry, what? What? Oh, yeah, we're going to an area today in this episode where apparently we're gonna go in under the sea, which is why I did that. Or will we? I don't know. We got an item from the from the headmaster in the last episode called a coral hammer. It's a legendary hammer that's attuned to the deep blue. So I think we're gonna be going to the ocean in today's episode of Sea of Stars, right here on Missile Dine Online. What's up? That's me. That's my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on yet another video. The last episode was pretty cool. It was a lot of backtracky stuff, but definitely worth doing we were able to get play a ton of wheels more importantly we were also able to get um we we have our own town now called mirth that we can recruit npcs for and find building plans and all that stuff we also were able to get upgrades for wheels including the engineer figurine and the gold wheel we have music sheet number one that we found at Moon Cradle. We are finding all of the stuff and things, and I am just I very happy about it's just awesome. It's just awesome is what it is. And also, we got a skill here, an ultimate, Sarai's ultimate attack. We're still being taught game mechanics at this point in the... St I love it. Uh, so Sarai has an ultimate, which means... I'm guessing that's what everybody's is, is they're missing their ultimate. Let's see how long it takes for us to uh, be able to collect those all. All right, we got to use this dock here. We are over at Watcher Island. Uh, I think we need to like, and then head. Yeah, there we go. Weird. All right, here we go. Jungle path. Well, that's not the ocean now, is it? Watcher Island. The hidden city of the Dakari should be somewhere beyond this jungle. We've got the coral hammer. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. We have, they give us a camp at a save point right away. We can also do some, oh, we got an enemy. Let's check it out. What do we got? Oh, we were able to also buy the, oh, look at that. We were able to buy the Eye of Yamora, which will actually show us different enemies' uh, resistances and things that they are vulnerable to. So in this case, we have the Garnoi, which is weak to poison attacks. Interesting. And we've fought Krubs before, I believe, although these ones, uh, no, they look about to be as weak. So let's go ahead and we'll... Uh, I think we'll just use Sarai here. Maybe do a little phase shift, give her a boost. We'll do a phase shift on this enemy here because we don't really do phase shifts. Oh yeah, that does some damage, 89. Missed the timing on it, of course, but... Yeah, the Krubs are nothing, so we're not gonna worry too much about those. We can Sunball here as well, just for some damage. And you can actually see the combo meter now. Deleting both of the Krubs there. All right, let's see what you got. Oh my God, it reminds me of Greninja. That's really cool from Pokemon. So you can see the combo meters. We'll build that up by spending combos. Because it's not building up now. It's only got 11 damage. Let's go ahead and boost and finish this off. Definitely want to see Sarai's ultimate attack though. 520 XP from that. Most of that probably coming from... The Garnoi there, the Greninja enemy. Up here we can find a picnic basket with a peach strudel, which is the first time we've seen that. 12 MP recovery item for that. That is pretty darn swell. Grab some tomatoes there. I'm gonna have somebody that's like, that's not how you pronounce tomatoes. Uh, I know. I know. So this area kind of reminds me of the coral cascades that we, you know, we're just backtracking through, but a little bit different. See if there's anything in the water here. Oh, yep, there sure is. We can find sapphire ore. That sounds, I think that's the first time we found something like that as well. Let's see if there's anything else we can find by swimming. 
Now that now that I know that I missed that. Oh, look at that. And we get quiz question pack number four. We should probably check with the question master mini game that I we introduced just a couple episodes ago. Because we have question pack number three and now question pack number four that we can do. Uh, I don't think that's a time sensitive thing. I think we can wait and grab those whenever we get to them. Let's go ahead and grab these tomatoes as well and then head into this little cave here. Oh, there we go. And grab blue. 22 damage. It is it is so Greninja and I love it. I love it. All right, we're going to go ahead and get a boost here on Sarai. Not able to break the lock, but that's okay. Slurp kiss. Oh, wait. Slurp kiss. Another Chrono Trigger reference here in the Sea of Stars. 82 damage and we get Sarai back from that. Beautiful. We get meat from that one. Dakari armor. Well, that's new. Let's go ahead and see what we got. Maybe finally, not quite, reasonably robust. I was going to say maybe an upgrade for Zale, but we lose a lot of magic defense from that. I don't think that's really worth. Uh, they can't equip that. Sarai and Garl. So I guess we'll just give it to... Actually, you know what? I think Zale just needs more physical defense. His is really low. He's He's got a lot of magic defense, but his physical is just real bad. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to equip that on him as well, which means that we now have the Mage Knight armor. We could equip that on Valir, but then that's just she loses so much from that. So we won't do that. We've been having we've had that on, though, since the abandoned Wizards Lab. It's been quite a while. So we grab that from the Garnoi, the Greninja like enemy. It's totally supposed to be Greninja, right? And we get some apples, which has been, I think that's only the second time that we found those. Looks like we also have a little area here. We can use this to jump into the water. But damn! Oh, I feel like me, whoop. I feel like maybe a scene's go. Oh, there's another enemy there, a giant scorpion. There's gotta be something over here first, right? Oh, we can't actually, oh dang, okay. Can't go that way. The current is too strong, so we can attack this, though. Oh, those are new. So we have a Sculpion and a Pra Pra. Not weak to anything, but the Scorpion, the Sculpion, is weak to basically any magic. Gonna do a boost then and attack that. Go ahead and do a Moonerang out of Valir. Taking out the Scorpion so we won't see what that does. Cat Storm! Did you just throw a bunch of items at us? Is that what that was? That did a ton of damage taking out Sarai. All right, little melee attack there. We're gonna do, we're gonna do this and then I'm gonna combo. Using Solstice Strike, we were able to see the ultimate for Sarai build up just a little bit there. And we're going to go ahead and Healing Light on... Ah, probably should have done it on Valir, but that's okay. We definitely want to break the locks then on these bird enemies. Because that seems to be like quite a bit. A thousand XP though and 12 gold. Love to see that. I feel like this is the way we have to go. Oh, found a little cave where we can grab another item. A sapphire ore. All right. Heading up here, get more berries. Can never have enough berries. Not enough MP. And I guess we can beat these pretty quickly. All right, so crew enemy is definitely not worth fighting. They basically give us nothing. And then something here, but we can't... Whatever that is, we can't use, unfortunately. 
So, I guess... Okay. We can jump down here. Good to know that there's... We'll just have to keep an eye out. More berries there that we can grab. This is the water that has a really strong current. Maybe we can grab blue. Doesn't look like it. Oh, but we are able to actually probably just jump across. It'll push us down, but... I think that's probably okay, because there's a little gate here. Oops. I was just checking. I... I... I knew that. I knew that would... Obviously. Duh. Alright, we have a switch here we can flip. She'll extend that bridge. Look at that. We're doing stuff. Oh, that's so cool looking. But we can't... Obviously, we can't swim that way because the current's still... I don't see anything else that we can grab here. So, let's go up on the bridge then. This game is so pretty, man. Really, really is. The music, every every new area we find, the music's just like a little Oh, shoot. Y'all, there were there were birds in that bush. Unfortunately, not going to be able to break any of those locks. That does just way too much damage. Holy smokes. Wow. That is unbelievable. All right, let's go ahead and Venom Flurry. That is so much damage. Finish this one off. Get a boost for Sarai. Okay, whew. That was, uh... Man, that Cax Storm or whatever they do is is a lot of damage. A little water here. Okay, we can actually go through. Seeing if there's like a hidden cave or something. Stuff over here? No? Doesn't look it. Actually, was there something over here that we could use? Just realized that up here was a wind turbine. Moves a mirror. All right, so it's got to be something to do with the light puzzles, which I was actually saying in the last episode that we haven't had one of those in a while. These all move. It looks like they... Okay. Well, there we go. Oh, hello. Those are so cool. I want to know, like, the story of these giants and stuff, though. That's really cool. I'm sure we will. It looks like that will lead us back down. Huh. Like, I mean, we have no way of activating because they're we have to be sitting on a seal to be able to do that. We just we just we don't have right. Like that's how we control the time. I think we just jump into the water. This is gonna bring us. Yeah, maybe we can go this way and then. Yep. Okay. Cool. At least grab some grain. Can we climb up here? Oh, we sure can. All right, cool. I was like, wait. And then grab some vineage. Ooh, what's over here? Oh, uh, yeah. Behind the waterfall stuff. Wait, wait, wait. That feels like maybe we have to go that way. Check up what's here first. Get some more appels. Yeah, it looks like that leads down. Oh, we got more enemies there. Well, grapple. No birds. No birds. All right. No birds. Love that for us because we are, uh, well, we're looking a little rough here, friends. Sarai survived with one health there. I think what we'll actually do is, as much as I love Garl and I think he's the best, I just, com combat wise, I just don't think he's as good as some of our other friends here, you know? Uh, and then we'll healing light from Zale. Grab these things as well. Doesn't look like there's anything we can grab there. There might be something hidden, but if we go this way, we can get this ladder. This is where we shimmied through here. 
Or could have, but is there any reason to do that? If they, if it all, oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, there was. Okay, yeah. The best part of any, any game. Having stuff behind the waterfalls. Looks like there's a, interesting. The mural depicts some kind of curse involving a flower. We get the stone tablet piece, another story for Teeks! Yes! That's what I'm talking about, baby. Okay. We don't have a camp right now, but I'm sure we will soon. We'll be able to read that story. Let's go ahead and go... I guess we can't go that way. So we go up here. This map is cool. Oh, look at that. I knew we'd get a camp soon. Let's set it up, read the story. I still can't believe we have our own ship now. This is awesome. I wonder, so Sarai, like I'm still kind of curious. Yeah, Sarai knew that Erlina and Brugovs were gonna do this. Erlina and Brugovs won't get away with this. Yeah. All right, Teeks, we have a new story. The Vampire Rose. Yes. There once was a botanist who attempted to trick death by growing a rose so pretty she couldn't bear to reap it. Smitten, death spiraled into confusion as she appreciated the beauty of life for the very first time. Whether her next action was fueled by jealous rage or opportunistic guile, no one really knows. Using wicked magic, she turned the flower into something even more beautiful, but very cursed indeed. The vampire arose, a thing of beckoning beauty, compelling all who lay eyes upon it to willingly take part in their own corruption. Rumors of the magical rose reached all corners of the world, carrying a simple promise. A promise few could resist. Eternal life, provided they could take it. Despite the elation offered by the initial touch, the price became apparent all too quickly. For every second spent holding the Vampire Rose, a year would be added to one's lifespan. But for every borrowed year, a thorn would grow on one of their bones. Stories say that of all the people to touch the Vampire Rose, most realize their mistake instantly, having extended their lives by but a single year. They'd release their grip and live on, only with a very painful reminder felt in their every move. But there were others unable to stop themselves and became what few would describe as human or even alive. Though it is unclear whether the Vampire Rose yet exists, everyone agrees on one thing. It appears that, in the end, death always gets the, laugh, the last laugh in the faces of those foolish enough to try and cheat her. The end. Huh. Not quite what I expected out of that. Now that we've saved, we have more stuff we can grab here. We got tomatoes, baby! Let's check this other side first before going... We got berries? I was gonna say before we jump into the water, but oh, okay. It's a cool area though, for sure. I think we want to wait. Now we could probably grab onto that, but if we go this way. It looks like, and maybe not, but it looks like there's a sandbar here. Nope. Dang. Can't just pull ourselves up though, so uh, I'm not seeing anything. I guess we just continue this way. This way we can do that. I like the moving. Oh no no! <laughs> I like the moving water as I screw up. But oh, you. Now, now, let us talk. There's no need for you to see this errand through. What's the matter, getting scared? My, aren't we feisty. We do not have to quarrel. Simply hand over the coral hammer and we will be on our way. Come and get it then. Three. Commence. Oh! No way, we get to fight them now? One and three, baby. You know, three has not said a single word, but here we go, a boss battle. 
one in three disciples of the Fleshmancer, I guess? I think what we're gonna do, because I'm not sure what... I'm kind of thinking that we focus on... I think we focus maybe on three here. They look like pure DPS, right? So I'm a little worried about how much damage they can do to us. Let's attack them and build up our boost. Woo, okay. Oh, wow. Uh, that's gonna be, uh-oh, Spaghetti-O. Oh yeah, okay. So he does he just doesn't do that much damage. I'm wondering though. I'm thinking that we I mean we can break that, right? Maybe we do just one boost for now. Oh! Oh! Oh, that you cl you clever. So we actually can't break his lock then. We can't attack him. I say we Lunar Shield here, then. V attack. Nice. Still gonna take down Zale. Unfortunately focused on the... the enemies that don't have a thing here. Alright, we're gonna attack three. But we're gonna use it on Sarai, and she's gonna Venom f Venom Flurry. Doesn't do that much damage, but yikes! Zales up. I think we're gonna use a Sunball here on. Three. 75 damage, not much. They're just like not quite close enough together. I'm actually thinking that we should use We'll use a we'll use a hearty stew on Sarai. We can't break that. Could use this to give MP back. We're gonna use Solstice Strike very soon. Oof. What's interesting about this is I actually feel like. Oh, we don't have a combo yet. Uh, I think we use Hardy Stew on. Yeah, we'll use a hearty stew. That's two combo now. This is V attack. 61 damage. Oh, man. All right. We're going to use... Uh, we can do bash drop, moderate blush, blunt damage versus one target. We want to do that, though, right? Because this way we can build up... If we use the combo, I kind of want to try soon ring. So I guess we'll wait... We'll go ahead and swap Garl in so that he can use Nourish on Valir. Yes! Got the timing on that! I think we're going to use a boost here and then Moonering. Probably a better idea to just wait for Lunar Shields, but because Lunar Shields just so good. Now I can use what I want to use, which is I want to check out this new one, this Soonring. We're going to go ahead and do that. It's only on one target, though, so we're going to focus on three... Oh, right. Oh, we did it. Okay, just th just three is defeated now. Will he get back up? That was cool. We can't use... Actually, wait a minute. Can we use... We might actually be able to use... Yeah. 
So it's only when it's charged. Oh, you know what? I bet you it's because we defeated three. So we, there we go. 1800. Okay, that was actually really easy. It seems this round is yours. Savor it. The next time we meet will be the last. Who are they? Okay, so I guess because we defeated three, he couldn't do V attack anymore, which means that he wasn't, like, protected with his shield anymore, I guess? That is, uh... That is really cool. The only thing that's unfortunate about that, though, is I was... Uh, I wanted to use Sarai. I wanted to see Sarai's ultimate, but we'll get there. I wonder if we should head back and... Use the... Well, let's see what's ahead. Oh, okay. We can go ahead and set up a camp real quick here. What is this area? Do we know? Lake Dakaria. All right, I went out ahead and rested real quick and also checked to see if any of our team had anything to say about three and one, but nothing. So we're going to Lake Dakaria. Huh. Looks very similar to where we just were. There's a lot of stuff that we... Oh! Under the waves of a blue lake dwells the lost city. I'm all for a swim, but this looks deep. No way we can hold our breath for that long. Well, if it comes down to it, there's something I've been meaning to... Hey, see that bell over there? Uh, Sarai was about to tell us something. It looks similar to the hammer Moraine gave us. Ah, so that's the bell we need to ring with the coral hammer. Hmm, right. Let's hit it and see what happens. Uh, nobody wants to know what Sarai was just about to... Can we just... Nobody? Okay, well. So it looks like maybe we have to just use the bell first. It doesn't look like there's anything here that we can find all right we have obviously where the bell is and then that cool area up there i saw that that looks neat oh we can go through here listen i'm just you gotta be thorough you know weird that there's no music here just a random okay well, I guess we should listen to them and go ring the bell. Fine. Okay, game, if you say so. Coral hammer. Ah. Now the music starts. Well, before, let's check out... Hello? Nope. Well, I guess we have to go in there then. Oh my god, hello? Welcome to Lake Dakaria, travelers. Hello! We're looking for the Oracle of Tides. Why, yes. Your coming has been foreseen. Solstice warriors are always welcome here. Is this the temple then? Oh no. The temple is in Dakari village. It sits on the ocean floor deep below this lake. But... Worry not, travelers. You will soon become attuned to the deep. Come, the first step of the ritual is right here. Oh, this is exciting! Now, please, pick the seashell that is most beautiful to you. We get to keep one? Uh, oops, sorry, do you mind? This is so special. <laughs> of course, go for it, Garl. I think I'll do this one. Or maybe this one. Take a little time. This one's the best. What do you think, Sarai? What? Oh, uh, sure. Okay, this is the one. 
a good pick. To complete the ritual, you must now go to the secret grove and let the sea shell drink from its altar. Only then will its magic resonate with you. What kind of magic? Why, the kind that will let you breathe under water. Whoa! This is the only way for you to reach Jakari Village and meet with the Oracle. Will it work for all of us? Absolutely, provided you stay close to one another. It's probably best if you hold on to it then. And we got the seashell. I will unlock the lake's north gate for you. Your destination is to the northwest. Make for the sacred grove and remember to steer clear Torment Peak. Torment Peak, huh? All right. Well, this is, uh, I don't know what that voice is. Listen, I don't know. How do you voice a fish dude? Anyways, I guess we're just gonna, we're, we gotta go. I mean, does this have any, like, needs to be infused with magic at the sacred grove? All right, another world map section. So they said to, we couldn't go. So there's an area over here, the sacred grove. That's where we gotta go. There's the guardian of this area little just a little creepy there's uh something there but we we can't go there yet looks like maybe a sh is this that's torment peak they said not to go there they said stay away so i guess we're fishing real quick at watcher's pond i mean that makes sense we're on watcher's island new fish oh yeah three new fish remember we do need to get all of those we need to get all of the fishies. Oh, we got one right away. Oh, this one's beautiful. Look at that. We get the sun carp. Yeah, we'll fillet that. And a, oh, whoa, that is beautiful. Viridian lobster. Yum, 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 yum. All right, this one, new one loves to jump, so easy peasy. There we go. We get a fluorescent piranha. And I think that's actually all three. Yep, we got the fluorescent piranha. If you didn't get the crimson bass yet, you can get that here. Sun carp and viridian lobster. We don't really need any more now, do we? Okay, just as a heads up, it is not worth trying to catch crimson bass. Fork that, man. Once you have your one, move on. I mean, I'm kind of curious to see why they said don't go to Torment Peak. You know what I'm saying? The celestial rune is broken. We can't use the time of day to activate this device. Ah, well, I guess that's why we can't go to Torment Peak, huh? I mean, with a name like that, maybe we really don't want to. All right, so we're gonna go to the Sacred Grove, which is right over here. Oh, hello, you're beautiful. I mean, we don't need, we just used a camp and stuff, so we don't necessarily need to do that. We need to infuse this seashell with magic. Nice. Are you gonna become, okay. Oh, I knew it. I was like, wait, are you gonna become big birds? Yeah, the answer is yes, they will. But there we go. One solstice strike was able to just delete that. that I love that. Obviously, we want the combo points to go as much as possible. I, not that it matters, because you need to build them up. And I just, I want to see your ultimate, man. All right, we're going to go this way. Oh, we got more crubes and a bird. That's interesting that they use the small birds. Like, okay, you don't need to do that, but we're going to sunball here. Taking out both, both of the crubes. Doing a ton of damage to the bird. Love to see it. We'll get a new... Okay, we can't go up there yet. Looks like this will allow us to raise... Ooh, what do we do? Okay, so we have a couple of them here. So let's grab... Do this one first. Okay, well, we can't... We can't climb it. Oh, it doesn't wait. It just... All right, these ones do, though. OK, 
Okay. We got more birds. Not at all close to each other, though, huh? Yikes. Let's go ahead and swap in and hurl this one, hopefully into the... Whoop! Yeah. Okay, great. And then I think what we're going to do here is we're actually going to... See, I could Lunar Shield. That would be Swell. It's probably stopping a ton of damage. Oh, it deleted all of our... Never mind. Those birds suck! 1,000 XP, though, for defeating the three of them. Woo! They're tough, man. They're real tough. Especially when you are like, oh, oh, wait, I see that. There's a rainbow conch there yet again. We're getting... Ooh, wait. We need to... Okay, we need to figure out how to get up there then. Wait a minute. Maybe we can go back there then. Oh, but it won't let us grab... Okay. Wait, can we go through here? Oh, we can. Coral daggers. We get a upgrade for our girl, Sarai. Which puts her at, that is a, that is a pretty dramatic increase. Handcrafted by Dakari artisans. No reason to use shimmering daggers anymore. We're not really fighting on dead. Plus five attack, plus six magic attack. You'll love to see it. You just love it. All right, now we can... Oh, can we not head... Yeah, we could head back up there. I think we just need to... And just go before it gets there. That's it. Okay, that was very easy. I overthought the poop out of that puzzle, let me tell you. Uh, we are, we are looking a little low on health here. We're going to use a Moon Cradle Fish Pie. Told you, those birds, man. Slurp Kiss. Go ahead and switch to Sarai here. With those new daggers, look at that. I love that the they actually, like, changed the way they look. Blocked both of those. And we're going to hopefully get a big boost here. We get a double boost. 75 damage. It's not as much as I would have liked. All right, Garl. 12 health. Finish this off. There you go, bud. So Slurp Kiss just literally, they just take one of your party members. I wonder if they can do multiple of those. And we get a Valir in Sarai learned combo skill Moon Shiv. I bet you it's the exact same thing as her Venom Flurry, but with... Yeah, high damage versus one target. Wait a minute. Maybe not that. Oh, no. It's like her uh, phase shiv then, but with moon moon and venom damage, high damage versus one target. Well, level three, though. I mean, it might end up doing a ton of damage to certain bosses and stuff like that, but I don't see that one being used as often as some of the others that we've discovered so far. There we go. You didn't, I didn't fall. You didn't see nothing. All right, so we got that item. There was that rainbow conch. So I guess we're just heading up here now. I like this area. I like this whole section. This is very cool. It doesn't have the same like, you know, spooky vibes as a lot of what we've been doing lately. So uh, I don't know. Head oh, birds are scaring me now. I'll grab this item, a sapphire ore. I would have liked, you know, another weapon upgrade, but that's okay. Actually, Garl hasn't received one in quite some time. We have... Oh, we can already... This is where... All right, let's use the seashell and infuse it with magic. That's definitely the altar. So the seashell goes here and... That did it! I can feel the magic! And we get the magic seashell! You can now explore underwater sections by entering whirlpools. Let's give it a try. 
I, I was just about to say the same thing. Let's give it a try, bud. Let's the bearer breathe underwater. All right. Whoa. Under the sea. Life's so much better. Down where it's wetter. Take it from... No, okay. I, I'll stop. So, it's not just any underwater section, though. It's whenever there's a whirlpool. I'm wondering if it's really hard to see anything, like if there's extra stuff, but... This is very cool looking. Looks like we can use this whirlpool to go up. That is really neat. So that put us out over here. Right by the camp. That's handy. I think that's probably everything we can get over here. I didn't see anything else. We did that time puzzle. We were able to get coral daggers and a new move for Sarai and Valir. Little combo move for them. We're back on the world map. Let's head back to Lake Dakaria. <laughs> that whirlpool opened up for sure. Should we uh, check in with Fishman? Let him know that we... We did it. Thank you for honoring our tradition. You can now visit Dakari Village at your convenience. Whenever you're ready, the way is through the big whirlpool. Dope. Thanks, bud. No real reason to talk to him, but hey, you know, say say hello to your friends when you when you see them. I mean, I guess we just have to continue on to Dakari Village and maybe we'll be able because we don't have there's got to be a way to interact with those puzzles that we saw earlier in the jungle path, but we just don't have that yet. Maybe a way to control the light and not needing to stand on a sigil is the natural progression here. Oh, this is literally, we're just thrown into a town right away. Oh, whoa. Welcome to Rakari Village, adventurers. It has been so long since we had visitors. Nice to meet you. We're looking for the Oracle of Tides. Why, of course you are. The temple is just up north from here. That's where the Oracle resides. He's no doubt expecting you. Cool. Hello. Some Dakari prefer to remain in their inner chambers most of the time. As a tribe, we learn not to take offense at such behavior and to celebrate each community member's freedom to engage in associates to the extent that they desire. I don't know how fish sound. This is we're literally under the water in a in a bubble. It reminds me of the Gungans. Don't get mad at me for saying that. I like the Gungans, okay? We get an N here. Uh, why don't we stay? Yeah, we'll probably need a rest. Maybe check in with some folks. The seashell's so pretty. And water breathing? That's too much. Sarai? Eh, she's got nothing to say. Valir's just watching this whirlpool. The Oracle of Tides. Fingers crossed that this gets us onto Mesa Island. I, I feel like we're going to have a little bit of a ways to go before getting to Mesa Island where the Dweller of Strife is. I feel like we probably need to power up a little bit before that. Uh, we should maybe cook some stuff. Oh, do, 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 do. All right. What about you? I thought wheels would be hard to get a grasp of, but I just played a couple of games and it all made sense. Yeah. Oh, there's a little kid. I just came here just to the pirates. Cool. And go in there. There's no reason to, but do you guys say anything different? No. Okay. There's no real reason to talk to the pirates then, from what I can tell. Want to play some wheels? Champion game? Here we go. A lot of wheels these past couple of episodes dealing with a... Uh-oh. A thief assassin guy. I think it's an assassin. And a mage, meaning a lot of damage coming out from them. No reason to have an engineer. This is going to be a little tough, maybe. We're going to go with uh, what we've been doing. Mage and archer. Hope for some good RNG, baby. It's not the worst RNG right out of the gate. We're going to go ahead and just fill up on diamond here for the mage or archer. Yep. Archer is going to be able to attack right away. So is their thief, though. 
which adds a delay, actually. I forgot about that. The delay to our figures as well. It's actually a pretty strong... It's pretty strong. Uh, and I think here we're actually just going to go for that. See if we get a promotion piece here. Perfect. They got a bulwark. That's relatively okay. We'll be able to attack with the archer right to the face. Archer gets promoted as well. And... We do want to take out the bulwark. Archer is going to be able to attack yet again. Three damage left on the crown. We're actually kicking this one's butt real fast. I'm actually going to double up. Uh, we're actually just going to give the mage. Yeah, perfect. That's actually really useful. Now, we could have a bulwark of our own here. Uh, but I don't necessarily think we need that. I think as long as we get face, I think we'll be okay. And I believe, actually, this might be face here. We'll get a promotion on the mage and the archer. Oh, we're so close. We just need to attack once and we're good. And that'll do it. Unfortunately, the... The assassin actually gets to go first, was able to delay my mage. I wonder why they're able to go first, though. That's a little goofy. And hope for a... Perfect. Look at that. We had really good RNG, actually, on this map. Or this wheels. We'll be able to attack with both of them. Which means we win. Without even really needing to do anything else there. <laughs> I guess we'll win in style. Sure, why not? All right, that was a very easy wheels match. Probably the easiest one so far. You won, congratulations, here's your prize. We get the priest figurine, all right. So that means, what, we have, we have all of the figurines, at least that we've seen so far for wheels? Makes the priest class playable. Actually, maybe we don't because, oh no, we don't, we don't have the assassin one yet, do we? Yeah, we don't have that one. Why was I thinking we did? Because I'm a freak, that's why. Cool. Well, we are done with that. I love that. Did we go in here yet? No. Looks like there's another whirlpool. Maybe we can... Looks like we can come up here. There's a weird, like... Oh, I bet you flip this. Nice. Is there any reason to go this way, though? No? This is a really cool area, though. Yeah, there's some weird graphical glitch that happens there against the stairs with the water. Use the whirlpool. We can get down. Oh, look at that. You're just as warriors, aren't you? Does the Elder Mist really exist? You bet. Well, <laughs> You bet. So they know, even the Dakari know about this, and they're under the sea. Under the lake, I guess. Another rainbow conch. I think that brings us to, what, 30? 30, 32, y'all. I think the book said there was 60. I'd love to take my shun around the world, but we also want to run our own Flemish store. We thought of moving to Brisk, but everything is way too established there. We'd never break through. Okay. Murph, that sure sounds interesting. We'll pack our things right away. Stinks. Make sure you drop boy. Oh, no, shoot. So now we have a merchant over at Murph. Well, sort of, maybe, because we we need building plans for Bob the Builder. All right, looks like that's all we can get here, so. But that's cool. Able to get a NPC to head to Murph and our 32nd one of those thingamajigs. Oh, I was like, how do we get out? I didn't see this little bar there. Okay, up here we have another rainbow conch. Looks like we'll be able to hit that 33 mark. Every Takori horse has an ember chamber. We come up to the part above the surface when we want to serve Shiroj. While in our chambers are a bit more private and customized to their owner's preferences, visitors are always free to come and go as they please. Don't be shy now. All right, cool. What do you got? Okay, we got a merchant. 
Looks like another whirlpool. Oh, we can come. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Let's shop first and then we can go back there. Uh, well, that's new. Gives 110 HP and 6 MP. I like that, but it requires a lot of onion. An onion? Well, we can buy onion. We can also sell the three sapphire ones that we got there, and then we'll be able to buy this recipe. Yeah, maybe some onions too. Why not? Cool. I feel like I've been running a little low on onions. Probably should have checked. Probably should have checked this merchant first, huh? All right, we got pearlescent apron for our boy Garl. We got Dakari, another another set of Dakari armor, coral staff and coral sword. Well, I think I do want to buy those just because y'all, you know, I uh I've been screwed by deciding not to buy things before. What can we sell though for those? I was able to sell some stuff enough to be able to at least get the coral staff and the we're going to we're going to keep the shimmering staff and the coral sword. We're going to equip that as well. We're not going to sell the shimmering sword. Like I said, I I want to have if it's a unique item, I want to keep it. So I need all right, I need to be able to buy this apron for Garl as well. All right, and I can buy that now for Garl and we're going to keep the spectral cape. Actually, we're going to sell the spectral cape because I don't I already have one of the I already have one. So, we'll sell one. Like I said, I just want to make sure that I have one of pretty much everything that I can. Just, just, you know, completionist stuff. I have a problem, okay? Let's use this whirlpool. I think this is probably going to bring us out. Ooh, there's a little section over here, though. Oh, which one do we want to use first? Let's use this one first. Maybe not. Let's do it. Hello. Our tribe comes from the deep blue, far below the ocean floor. As aquatic nomads, we followed the guidance of the Oracle of Tides for generations, establishing encampments ever closer to the surface. As you can see, we eventually made it to our destination. After Dakari Village was founded, we abandoned our nomadic way of life. Cool. I'm gonna steal your stuff though, if you don't mind. We get a story for Teeks. Which I'm a big fan of getting, because, you know, more lore is good. Oh, there we go. A rainbow conch. 33 of them now. Let's go ahead and use this lower whirlpool. Oh, this is... I don't know what this room is, but... North of here is the dreadful mountain known as Torment Peak. Stories say that generations ago, solstice warriors sealed an evil within it. Which makes me wonder, how could something be so dreadful that even they would run from it? Right up, now I'm scared. Ah. That's strange. I mean, I'm cool. I'm all for a little, uh, I don't know. A little flavor room here. Cool. Almost looks like a restaurant, maybe? We got what we needed. We're f we got new armor for Garl. We got new weapons for Valir and Zale. Hello. While some of us can wield a trident with relative efficiency, we are not a tribe of warriors, or rather, not anymore. Huh. I love I love all of this. This is super cool. This is our temple, where the Oracle of Tides communes with the waters of the world to keep us informed of important events. We knew you were coming, of course. Feel free to enter. And I like that they're just, like, friends of ours. Like, we don't need to worry about, you know, we don't need to, like, win them over or anything. Hello? Hello there, adventurers! Congratulations on finding Mana's Market of Marvels! Turn in your rainbow conches right here for unique rewards! We- Oh, are you running a shop? That's Market of Marvels! Grandpa left me a whole bunch of items and relics up for grabs to whoever helps me grow my Rainbow Conch collection. Sounds fun. Where can we find them? Around! Though Rainbow Conches are all the rage as of late, so the easy ones are mostly gone. Just need to keep your eyes peeled for secret areas. Some people might be swayed into giving theirs up, too. You seem to know a lot for your age. 
business is a game of mutual benefit and leverage. I did my homework. I know you won't be able to resist schematics to build a tavern and a fishing house in that town you founded. What's that? You'd prefer epic loot like relics? You've come to the right place, Solstice Warriors. See, mutual benefit. You work for me and my rainbow conch collection will be unbeatable. Huh, you sure have the drive. Question is, do you have the rainbow conches? Actually, yeah. Yeah, I do. Any business? Seed, re seed rewards list? Something social? Oh, they don't tell you what the items are, though. Something social, something useful, something transactional. So we can get at least something shrewd. Healthy, relaxing, potent, and meta. <laughs> yeah, that's funny that one is meta. 33? Congratulations, I have something for you. We got in plans. We got cornucopia. Shop plans. Fishing hut plans. And falcon eyed parrot. All right. We don't have any. Uh, so if we. Okay, it changes now so we can just see what we've received. Okay, well, we have. Cornucopia. Party max. Are you serious? Party max HP plus 20. Sure. I love seeing that. And then we also got a relic. Falcon-Eyed Parrot. Adds a treasure hunting parrot to the Vespertine. Can be prompted while consulting the map for hints of things left to find. Helps finding remain... That is so dope. Holy smokes. Big fan. And then the other items that we got were just... Uh, I mean, literally just plans, right? got inn plans, construction of an inn, construction of a shop, construction of a fishing hut. And we have the NPCs, I think, for all of those, except the inn, maybe? So we need to find an innkeeper. Good day, adventurers. Might you help an old man out? Uh, maybe. What's the matter? It's my three grandkids. They wanted to play hide and seek, and well, I simply cannot find them. They have a habit of hiding in random inner chambers. And being from an older generation, I find myself quite unwilling to barge into other people's homes. If you could find them for me, I would be forever grateful. Uh. Alright, so now we gotta. Yo, we gotta hunt for kids now? Alright, well, let's go in here. We haven't gotten in here yet. Um. Little house. Looks like we can go this way. I'm guessing we're going to find one of the kids right in here. I think it's cool, the the whole, like, premise of the inner chamber and stuff like that where you need to... Oh, maybe not. A Stakari have a particular relationship with water, which our sensitive skin feels is very enveloping and keeps us calm and composed. If we spend too much time outside of a body of water, we are compelled by anxiety to find that comfort again. Each of us have their own threshold, some preferring to remain in their inner chamber at all times. You're welcome to visit them by using the water vortexes. Even though they are often forgotten, the more sensitive types have as much need for connection as anyone. Nice. Oh, there's a kid. Get a sapphire ingot, though. There's money. Hey, who are you? We're here on behalf of your grandpa. Oh, so he sent you. Yes. About time. I was getting bored. Well, I win. All right, that's kid number one. And a sapphire ingot, which is probably going to sell for money, which is real good. Probably should have, uh, I don't know, explored first before selling stuff that I didn't need to sell, but... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That was... I it, like, bugged out. Uh, I was a little worried there. Are you... Do you count? You won't catch me. I'm literally catching you. What do you mean? Oh, that's the kid we found. Don't look at me like that. I knew that, obviously. Duh. All right. Maybe in the... So we have the item shop, and then there was the... Like, the restaurant or whatever. So let's see if we can find in there. Yep. There it is. Hello. Hey, your grandpa sent us. He gives up. 
Hey, he's getting more and more tired every day. There's no fun. Guess I win. Okay, see ya. All right, so that's two out of three. Actually, let's go ahead and check this upper path to where we went out for the rainbow conch. See if maybe a kid is in here. Yep, there it is. Go away. You're ruining my hiding spot. Hey, your grandpa asked us to find you. Will we? But I wanted to play with him. I think you got a little too good at hiding. He gives up. Uh, I'm the best. All right, cool. So that's that, that's that one done. And we can go talk to the grandpa. We got all three kids. Yo, buddy. You have my thanks. I do love my little fellows, but they could be quite a strain on these old knees. Here, for your troubles. I suggest you turn these into a local entrepreneur. She carries quite the inventory. We got another rainbow conch, which puts us at 34 total. I think they said 35 was the was the reward, the next reward. So I guess it's time we I think we've done everything. So it's time to go check in with the Oracle of Tides now. As foreseen, a new generation of solstice warriors has come to seek guidance. The tides never lie. I am the Oracle of Tides, one of three seers. Welcome. Thank you for seeing us, Oracle. We're looking for a way onto Mesa Island. Straight to the point, I see. The monster you are hunting has put to shame a sizable force of your order in the past, and now it seems only the two of you remain. Still, you would venture into the Fleshmancer's old castle. Yes, whatever it takes. Then I suppose we should make this a serious audience. Allow me a moment to commune with the waters and see what the flow of time is willing to reveal. We're in a hurry. The Dweller of Strife could wake at any moment. Can you get us onto Mesa Island or not? The one who does not belong here is eager to speak, I see. Huh? The one do who does not belong here... Oh, y'all, I think I know Sarai's secret. Obviously no spoilers here, but is Sarai from the future? It is not the place of a seer to offer direct help, but rather to provide insight. May I assume it is understood that there will be no prophecy for you, foreign child? I... yes, of course. Very well, then. Warrior Cook, step forward. Hey, that's exactly... Step forward. There is a great deed you might be capable of. But it will only be revealed to you once it is too late to act on it. Okay, sure. When that moment comes, demand a flask of borrowed time. Flask of borrowed time. Got it. Thanks. Children of the Solstice, step forward. Hold still. the order of these events. Oh, a real shame. Ahem. You have been up front with me. So I shall do the same. But first, some closure. Seeing you now as I have seen you in my dreams, I know that the watch of the Dakari Oracles is at an end. At long last, the ones we have been expecting for centuries have come. 
This waterfall is the gateway to our world's greatest mystery, one that is yours to unveil. The Tower of Ansulo, an enigmatic structure concealing a door that has remained formerly shut since time immemorial. Waiting for two children of the solstice with a slim but very real chance of altering fate. Waiting for you. Right on! I always knew Zale and Valir were special. There is one other thing of which I am certain. Huh? Of all the possible outcomes, there is not a single one. Will you defeat the Dweller of Strife in battle? But there must be a way. Didn't you just say we might be able to alter fate? I do not make the rules, my child. You have had plenty of time to stare at the night inside of you. Your potential is immense, but you will not be prepared in time for the big confrontation. Regardless of what happens in that tower, there is no possible outcome where you defeat the Dweller of Strife. But we have to fight. And fight you will, but victory will not be yours. And you, Lunar Monk, with but a simple spark, you could have been the one to create paths on water and mend the connection at long last. Hmm. So close, and yet so far. But alas, it appears the problem begets the solution. We're still going to try. Isn't there anything you can do to help? It is not within my power to help you make it onto Mesa Island. Is the solution in that tower you mentioned? Whatever fate has in store for you, all I know for certain is that your next step is beyond this waterfall. The mysterious tower of Aunt Shudlo awaits. Survive its trials and discover the secret that has been waiting for you all along. Godspeed, Sostis Warriors. Ha! Huh. Well... We got a couple of prophecies there. Sarai, the foreign child, doesn't get a prophecy. That's because she's already lived them. I bet. Valir, it sounds like the Oracle is pushing us to be able to do the thing that we're supposed to do. And Garl needs to ask for the Flask of Borrowed Time. Should probably remember these prophecies going forward. And I guess we only have one thing to do. That's to head in here. Oh, we're on the world map. Can we set up a camp on the world map? Oh yeah, we can. It felt like a big deal to be allowed through the waterfall in the Oracle's room. Whatever we find in that tower, I've got your back. Yeah, it did feel like a big deal, didn't it? I always knew you two were special, but a big mysterious tower built just for you is something else. Flask of borrowed time. I'll have to remember that. It sounded important. Any guesses on what we'll find up that tower? Hmm. I don't know. Actually, if we... Can I... Whoop. Let's swap characters real quick. Just so that we can see what Zale has to say. We don't do that enough. So, no one's ever been inside that tower, huh? That's kind of exciting. Mesa Island. That's where the Dweller and the Acolytes are. After we took down two of them... And they were easy. And of course, we also have a story from Teeks. The Nomads of the Sea. This is about the Dakari? Yes! It was like a dream. No one believed it at first that their seemingly eternal journey could finally be over. Why them? And with the current Oracle of Tides being so young, who could confirm the long-awaited discovery? But in their heart of hearts they knew. Before them, appearing even more vividly than in their visions, stood the Tower of Aunt Sudlo. And so it was that the nomads of the sea, who had traversed abyssal plains since time immemorial, would settle at long last. Having reached their promised land, they started building next to the tower. In Takari Village, generations would come and go, each following the guidance of their respective Oracle of Tides. 
Since that day, they have been the guardians of Aunt Sudlo, waiting for those destined to open its gates. In this new era, memories of their nomadic days live on in classic tales, retelling the deeds of great explorers and formidable warriors. The most popular by far is the Battle of Fates Goya, a story with so many versions it may very well be just a myth. To the best of their abilities, historians have pieced together hints from various retellings of the battle, some even dedicating their lives to the subject. It is generally accepted as fact that the Dakari almost went extinct while crossing the territory of a gigantic sea slug. What happened next is a matter of much debate, depending on the interpretation of key passages and the credibility of certain sources. Some claim that the Battle of Fates Goyet never happened, dismissing it as a fabrication meant to scare off would-be pillagers of ancient Dakari treasure. This theory is mostly seen as a stretch, however, given that such looters' inability to breathe underwater would already be deterrent enough. Some historians say that the giant sea slug was defeated when the Dakari made their last stand on a flat-topped sea mount, giving the story its title. For others, the scriptures about sunken ruins are simply too consistent to be ignored. According to this version of events, the nomads sealed the monster away when they realized they couldn't defeat it. The key was then split into three equal parts, each waiting somewhere in the deep blue for future heroes brave enough to rid the world of this threat. The end. Well, all of these stories kind of connect in some way, and I think that we will be finding out in the next episode when we tackle the Tower of Aunt Sulo. Thank you so much for watching. Huge shout out to those of you watching in the premieres. Don't forget to like and comment as it really does help this series out, and I will see you in the next episode. Never give up, never surrender to being able to breathe underwater. Yep.